So there's changing costs. It's all about reusability, right? So reusability is certainly one part yep. of the reason why SpaceX is so cheap. I mean, the, the space shuttle was supposed to be reusable, but wasn't yeah. really. You had to take everything to pieces and re-glue the tiles. And I mean, and every tile couldn't even, it had like a very specific part, like they were numbered, it goes here. You couldn't say, eh, that tile can do that. And the turbo pump went through such hell during the takeoff that more or less had to build a new one each time. And even when they the recovered part. the solid boosters in the ocean, they still needed to be retrofitted again. The tank yeah. actually was never recovered. Yes. It, was, it wasn't reusable, essentially. It wasn't reusable. Uh, so this was not great. However, um, we now have, uh, starting with the Falcon 9, uh, reusability. Yes. And this is a, a shot of the uh, Falcon Heavy, I think, coming into a land. It's got its two boosters. That's right. This is the main engine and the two boosters on the side. And what you can see is they don't burn all their fuel. They leave a little bit of it behind. Yep. And then they fire that as it comes back down. Yep. And you see them coming down. They have to be able to throttle everything. Yep. So the rocket rockets are either on or off, but this one is somewhat able to throttle. They can't throttle it very much. They have to turn it on just the right moment, otherwise it'll turn around and come back up again. Yes. Um, but they've succeeded in landing it. They've now landed for many, many in succession. And a lot of these have now been on their 10th or, or, or so reuse missions. And as we talked about, right, if you're only building it once and the only thing you're really retrofitting is the fuel inside, well, that cost is just going to plummet and it's something we'll explore. Yeah, I mean, just talk about how expensive it would be if you had to fly to another country and after your flight, you throw away the uh, aircraft every yeah. time. Or you buy a car, when you run out of petrol, you just buy a new car, right? And yes. that's what the shuttle and other things were essentially doing. Yes, and so one can easily understand why reusability is makes things very uh, much cheaper. And yes. You see the things landing on the, uh, this is the, or landing on the sea platform. Yep. But that's, reusability is part of it, but actually that is not the full yep. explanation. So there's got to be more to it than that. That's right. I mean, first of all, even before they started reusing exactly. boosters, they were already about three times cheaper than anybody else. That's right. And how is SpaceX able to develop reusable rockets? Because, yeah, right, I mean, if we had 70 years of development, why all of a sudden do they have the magic recipe? I mean, SpaceX's budget is tiny compared to the budget of the European Space Age. I mean, no, yeah. I mean, Elon Musk funded it, yep. and he's a billionaire now, but he wasn't a billionaire when he funded it. That's right. Um, the, their budget for developing the early rockets and the reusable was maybe a billion dollars, which is small ch small peanuts for I mean, NASA or the European Space Age. Less than one shuttle launch, actually. Yes. And so why is SpaceX so cheap? Reusability is, is awesome, and yep. it's certainly why they large part of it, but that can't, can't, doesn't really explain it. There has to be something else in this key. So let's talk a bit about why SpaceX is so cheap. Okay. So first of all, let's think about the legacy companies, the old companies that have been fired, whether it's the European Space Agency or the US McDonnell Douglas or places like that, the yes. United Launch Alliance. Yep. Um, we've already talked about cost plus contracts. Yes. And the fact that kind of expenditure was a point. That's right. Um, another issue is the low yes. tolerance for failure. And that's something that is even still present today. Absolutely still present. That... Uh, if you rely on lobbying government to pay high prices and you've got some new rocket and the first three of them explode, it's very easy for the government. I mean, yeah. We know when we develop something, when I'm writing a piece of software or <laughs> developing a new telescope, <laughs> the first time you turn it on, it's not going to work. No, that's right. The hundredth time you turn it on, it's not going to work. That's you right. just try it on, see what breaks, etc. Exactly. Um, but these ones, if you, if you try that and blow up seven rockets in a row, yeah. you're going to get axed. Exactly. The senators don't understand the fact that you've got to test these things and they're and, just going to cut it. And that's quite inter different because, right, when you're looking at the Redstone and the early development there, they were launching rockets every week or two and letting them fail and redesign. So it was a shift. But that, even then it was a problem because right. a lot of the early pre-Redstone was done in secrecy. Yes. Because this is ballistic missiles. That's they were right. able to get over that, launch lots of things and watch them explode in, in secrecy. That's true. But once it became public, all they needed is a program to fail three or four times and yes. then you got the media and the government baying to close it down. Exactly. So low tolerance of failure means you can't try things out. You've got to get it right first time. Which, which is, is really hard. It, it's hard in any field, as yes. you said, when doing cameras or writing software. And another issue is that budget is used up by running yes. costs. I mean, NASA had a lot of money, but most of that money was spent on a billion dollar a pop launching the shuttle over and over and that, over again. That's right. So you, $20 billion sounds like a lot, but if you launch 20 times, you have no money for development for doing some of that testing, which is critical to doing the next round of development. That's right.